All right, guys, the next topic is structural directives. Structural directives are directives that let you add or remove HTML elements from the DOM. And we are going to learn about the three common built-in structural directives, namely ng-if, ng-switch, and ng-4. The first two directives, that is ng-if and ng-switch, are used to conditionally render HTML elements, whereas the ng-4 directive is used to render a list of HTML elements. Let's take a look at the ng-if directive in this video. Let's go back to Visual Studio Code. And you can see that I have created a new project called Structural Directives. Again, I've added a test component. And within the test component, we have an h2 tag in the template that says code evolution. And let's say we want to use the ng-if directive on this h2 tag. So within the opening tag, use an asterisk and then ng-if. To this, we need to assign a truthy or falsy value. Let's begin with a straightforward true. So now if we save this and take a look at the browser, we can see code evolution. And if I inspect the element, you can see the h2 tag within this app test HTML tag. Now back in our code, if I change true to false, save this and take a look at the browser, code evolution is not visible anymore. And what you need to keep in mind is that the h2 element is removed from the DOM itself. So in the elements panel, you cannot identify h2 tag within app test HTML element. And this is different from setting the CSS display property to none, in which case you will still be able to see the element in the DOM. All right, this is the basic usage of ng-if directive. Star ng-if, assign a truthy or falsy value, and that conditionally renders that particular HTML element. However, setting true or false on the right hand side is of not much use. So let's assign a property value instead. I'm gonna create a new property called display name and set it to true. And to the directive, I'm gonna assign display name. Now, if you save this and take a look at the browser, you can see code evolution. And if I change display name to false, code evolution is not displayed anymore. So now by making use of a property, we can add or remove the element in the DOM by toggling this display name between true and false. And that can be done easily with button clicks or any other events. But the bottom line is you have more control over rendering this particular H2 element. Now, a common thing to have with an if block is an else block. So let's take a look at an example to see how to implement an else block for the ng if directive. Now I'm gonna add a new h2 tag that says name is hidden. So basically, if display name is set to true, I want code evolution to be displayed, else I want name is hidden to be displayed. And here's how you do it. Bear with me for a couple of seconds and I will explain what is going on. First, I'm going to wrap this else part with an Angular specific HTML tag, which is the ng template tag. Next, I'm going to reference this ng template tag with a template reference variable. Let's call this else block. Now back in the ng if directive, I'm going to add a semicolon and then else followed by the ng template reference, which is else block. So let me explain how this works. First, it checks if display name is true. If it is true, the element to which the ng if directive is attached will be rendered in the DOM. If display name is false, however, Angular checks if there is an else statement. In our case, we do. Now it checks which HTML element needs to be rendered. In our case, it is the else block. And what is the else block? It is a reference to this block of HTML. The ng template tag is basically like a container for other elements that the ng if directive can use to properly add or remove blocks of HTML from the DOM. So when execution flows to the else condition, this block of code will be rendered in the screen. 
So if we save this and take a look at the browser, you can see that name is hidden, which is the else block in our example is rendered in the browser. All right, next let's take a look at another syntax that Angular provides for the ngif directive. Now, if you notice the directive is in line with the HTML block that needs to be conditionally rendered. But with the alternate syntax, you can have the directive in a separate tag. So let me show you an example. First, I'll create the if block and the else block that has to be rendered. And again, we use the ng template tag. Now for the if block, I've given a template reference variable of then block. And for the else block, I've given a reference variable else block. Let's add HTML to both these blocks. Code evolution for the if block, hidden for the else block. Now we can add a new HTML tag that contains the ngif directive. So let's add a div tag and then the ngif directive, so star ngif. To this, we assign a value and this is going to be display name. Now after this, we are going to add a semicolon followed by the keyword then and then then block. Semicolon again, else, else block. And here's how you read it. If display name is true, then render then block, else render else block. So right now our display name is set to false. So the else block will be rendered. So if you go back to the browser, you can see that hidden is displayed. And if I change display name to true and take a look at the browser again, you can see code evolution is now displayed. Well, that is how you use the ngif directive. In the next video, let's take a look at the ng switch directive.